Because I always say it's three sexual orientations out here. It's gay, straight, and Drake. Aubrey Drake Graham, without a doubt, has been the most dominant rapper within this last decade, with his competitors not even coming close to reaching him in accolades and money. Although Drake is praised for his cemented status in the rap game, he endured major trials and tribulations of people to fame in his career based on his Canadian upbringing in Toronto, or the fact that he played a rather timid character in his short acting career on Degrassi. The hating Drake train was something very popular during the early years of his career, because truly speaking, nobody thought that this light-skinned, soft-spoken Jewish kid from Toronto would amount to anything, and there were particularly people who went at Drake profusely with attempts to diminish his rap career stature. Breakfast Club radio host Charlamagne the God was one of the first major people to viciously go at Drake, calling him a sensitive-ass girl. The Drake slammer began in 2011 when Drake released Headlines, the breakout single on his Take Care album. Charlemagne, the unhinged radio personality, spared nobody the gift of grace. Charlemagne eviscerated Drake for being a singing rapper who played also a thug image in the music video. I think Drake can rap. He's a dope rapper, but I just hate when he sings. And I just think personally, he's a corny guy. He's just a corny dude. In that new Headlines video, he looks extra corny. It's like Drake. Why are you thugging now? Why are you dressed in all black? Why you got on black gloves? Why you got a whole bunch of dudes around you dressed in black? And he has the most non-threatening looking goons I've ever seen in my life. Like seriously, they look like a flash mob is about to run up in H&M and take everything. Like none of them look like a threat. And then he's singing headlines about catching bodies. You're gonna make me catch a body like that. You're gonna make somebody around me catch a body like that. And you know, don't do it cause when he go to jail, we all go through it. And you know, Drizzy gonna pay it. What do you mean pay it? What are you gonna pay for the bail? You're gonna pay for the hit? Like that's not you, Drake. In 2013, Drake released Hold On, We're Going Home, and Charlemagne slammed Drake for trying to sing. I hate that shit. Sonically, it's a good record. If it was Miguel, I'd probably love it. Trey Song singing it, I'd probably love it. If you could be the next Jay-Z, why would you wanna be the next Miguel? The biggest problem Charlemagne had with Drake was he felt that Drake was too fragile to be a rapper because he always had a problem whenever people such as Charlemagne spoke publicly berating him. In the following years, Charlemagne slowly shifted off Drake and actually supported him for the first time ever in the summer of 2015 during the height of the Meek Mill beef. Drake annihilated Meek Mill and dissed him on back to back, a diss track that Charlemagne praised as a top 5 diss track ever. Drake dissed Meek Mill for being in a relationship with Nicki Minaj and essentially living in her shadow because she was a more popular and successful artist than he made his infamous reference. You gonna make me buy bottles for Charlemagne. You gonna make me step out of my effing frame. Charlemagne gave Meek Mill donkey of the day on multiple occasions and praised Drake for mopping the floor with Meek on the record and gifting him six bottles of 2004 Don Perignon. In 2020, Charlemagne made jabs that the Drake era was over. The once short-lived positive relationship between Drake and Charlemagne would escalate when he called Drake's 2022 album, Honestly Nevermind, elevator music. I'm never going to revisit this album again, but if it comes out when I'm in the lobby of Luxury Hotel, I'm not mad at it. For the last two months, Drake has been teasing the release of his new album, For All The Dogs, which released last week Friday, October 6th. Leading up to this album, Drake released a song featuring SZA, Slimey Well, and Uncle Charla had a lot to say. Drake put out a song last Friday and nobody cared. It came out last Friday and people just started talking about the lyrics yesterday. I'm in a group chat and it's like Drake put out this record Friday and people are just getting to the lyrics on Monday? Drake has been a strong advocate for the 72 hour rule, ignoring embarrassing events or people diminishing your character, hoping somebody new will do an action so foolish in the next 72 hours, taking the attention off you, but there's only so much one person could take. Drake had an ether moment on Charlemagne. Are you okay, Leonard? Charlemagne's government. You kind of worded me out, G. Like you're really obsessed with me or something for years. Like you look in the mirror and wish you saw my reflection type shit. Whatever you gotta do, let it out. I'm sure your 435 loyal fans will stand by you, you effing goof. In deep thought about how you the off brand <laughs> Morris Chestnut. Drake went full Nas Ether mode. Through Charlamagne's entire career, he's been a part time Drake supporter, but a full time hater. People don't give artists any time to develop, and his harsh opinions on Drake turned sour as the years went on. Quit selling the next week. The so-called song that nobody cared about went number one on the charts, and Charlemagne was copping all type of pleas and giving reasons why his hate on Drake was actually planned and it was marketing because his insults backfired on him. I want to tell y'all something, but you're not gonna believe me because I'm lying. But Drake and I plan this out every time he drops the album, he sarcastically said. I'm part of the album rollout. He drops the record, I critique it, it brings more attention to the record, more attention to the project. I keep telling Drake he doesn't need me to do that, he's Drake, but for whatever reason, he wants me to do so, I oblige. It wasn't always like that though. Back in the day, I can honestly say I was hating Drake for fun. It was hilarious, at least to me. Philadelphia rapper Meek Mill 
was something that went out Drake lyrically and online, but lived to regret it. The infamous Drake vs. Meek Mill beef was a source of drama, excitement, and controversy that captured the attention of hip-hop fans and the media. Meek Mill was upset that Drake didn't retweet his album, Dreams Worth More Than Money, and went on an emotional-ass Twitter rant, attempting to expose Drake for having a ghostwriter, Quentin Miller, someone who was a major contribution to, if you're reading this, it's too late, one of Drake's best early projects. Stop comparing me to Drake. He don't write his own raps, and that's why he ain't to my album, because we found out. The idea of a rap superstar like Drake using a ghostwriter was seen as an ultimate betrayal of the art form. In hip-hop, lyrics are everything, so the idea that a rapper would hire someone else to write lyrics for them was seen as a violation of the unwritten code of hip-hop. To be fair though, Quentin Miller was listed on the writing credits for Rico, so technically, he wasn't a ghostwriter. Drake and Meek Mill traded diss tracks back to back, such as Charged Up by Drake and I'm the Plug by Meek Mill, but nothing would prepare the world to see Meek Mill get bodied by the light-skinned singing nigga from Toronto. Drake released back to back and all hell broke loose. He spoke on Meek's relationship with Nicki Minaj in which she was superior to him. Love it then you gotta give the world tour. Is that a world tour or your girls tour? I know that you gotta be a thug for it. This ain't what she meant when she told you to open up more. Twitter fingers turn to Twitter fingers. You getting body by a singing nigga. I'm not the type of niggas that'll type to niggas and shout out my boss bitches wife and niggas. We all could rap this song. But the point is, Meek Mill is officially property of Aubrey Graham, and ever since that, we've seen Meek Mill and Drake in the media being friendly toward each other, but you know it doesn't sit right with Meek Mill that he got bodied by the singing nigga. The Drake L was something I feel Meek Mill never recovered from. New Jersey rapper Joe Budden was someone who was sort of a pioneer in the black hip-hop podcasting space. Just like any other podcast or internet personality, he has given takes by artists that many people didn't agree with. However, artists don't really address him because they may need promo for him in the future, I don't want to burn that bridge, so they just suck up to him. Not saying Drake was in this position, but for the majority of his career, he has ignored Joe Budden's comments about him. But every dog has his day, if you know what I mean. Drake has had enough. Saturday, October 7th, Drake was performing his second sold out show in Toronto and his last show from his All Blur tour in his hometown. Less than 24 hours before, he released For All the Dogs, and Joe Budden had a special choice of words degrading his art. This, this is like Yachty rapping. This is like he rapping for the children. And that's my, yo dog, I had to look up how old this nigga was when I finished listening to the album. You are 36. Your birthday is in 20 days. I Googled that too. You will be 37 years old. Get the fuck away from some of these younger niggas. Drake would fire back and respond of deliberating Joe Budden on Instagram. Add Joe Budden, you have failed at music. You left it behind to do what you're doing in this clip because this is what actually pays your bills. For any artist watching this, just remember, you're watching a failure give their opinion on his idea, a recipe for success. A quitter give their opinion on how to achieve longevity. You switch careers because the thing that popped into your brain had you living broke check to check. And the raps you write at 450 men show up to your shows in dusty auntie jeans to scrub their face to mood music 29 and pretend you are the GOAT. Please, to any artist that's doing what they feel is right, don't these opinions affect your mindset after the fact. This guy is a post shot of frustration and surrendering. You retired and we never hung up your jersey. We don't even remember your number. We know you're from doing this. You were drew from rap, not because you accomplished all you need to, it's because it wasn't working for you. I never want anybody in this generation to think everybody's entitled to their own opinions is a real thing. This is a man projecting his own self-hate and the fact that I did and continue to do everything he wanted to do for himself. If you had to put in simpler terms, I own a 767. He owns a modest house in the 973 and flies first class on special occasions. Drake went on Joe Budden's entire career with facts leaving him speechless and to which Joe Budden said, you'll grow up sooner or later, father time is undefeated. With Drake just releasing For All The Dogs, people had very much mixed opinions on the album with some people saying this album is marking the downfall of Drake. The truth is, people follow trends and hating on Drake is the biggest trend in hip hop. Drake is the type of guy to say, geez Louise. Drake's the type of guy to take a picture and say, let's make a silly one. Let's not forget, people, Drake is also the type of guy to have the most number one hits on billboards for hip-hop. Drake is also the type of guy to win the best artist of the decade last year for the 2010s. Whether it fits the billboards, the VMAs, the MTVs, or the Grammys, every year since 2010, Drake arguably has been a candidate for the Artist of the Year. But it didn't stop here. Cash Money's Birdman, the big stun at Baby Out of New Orleans, backed up Jersey Town's Charlemagne and Joe Budden to put some respect on Champagne Poppy's name. Joe Budden, calm down, you're not built for this real gangsta shit. Charlemagne, 
I think you mean good, and I respect you, even though we had our differences. After almost 15 years of dominance, Drake is writing back to all the people that wrote him off, canceled him, and made it a high point during their career to make him the butt of their joke. Every hater of Aubrey Graham has been proved wrong and silenced. Charlemagne, still 10 years later, refused to give Drake his credit, and Jersey destroyed him by achieving mainstream success and also going out of it being an off-brand Morris Chestnut. The past beef with Meek Mill needs no further explanation. He thought Drake was some sweet kid from Toronto he could bully and quickly found himself on the other side of the spectrum being owned. Joe Budden is simply being Joe Budden. And just like the Migos said, if a nigga hatin' call him Joe Budden. Now Joe Budden was making fun of Lil Yachty when he entered the mainstream game for being a bubblegum soft type of rapper like we heard in Minnesota as well as Broccoli. And Yachty was a part of the label QC that the Migos are signed to. So the Migos, you know, pressed Joe when they saw him in LA at the BET Awards and it's been smoke ever since. Joe went at Drake, who's good friends with Lil Yachty, for doing certain songs and singing differently so we can appeal to younger audience. Joe was mad at Drake for embracing Kai Sinat and basically changing his audience or how he raps so they can appeal to a younger audience, which is just strategic marketing in my opinion. The name of the game and the blueprint is to stay relevant. If you don't evolve over time, you'll become an irrelevant rapper like Joe. It's been 20 years and nobody's singing Pump It Up. Drake has overall managed to strategically target his opponents when it was best for him instead of responding in the heat of the moment, which actually turned out to be a chess move because when he responded, nobody saw it coming. Just like how Jersey said on 8 a.m. in Charlotte, it's me versus whoever want to lose. Everybody went against Drake got destroyed and ain't no telling if there's going to be a comeback.